how do you start a new business as a real estate agent, promote yourself to team leader, start your own brokerage, then grow that brokerage to a top five in your city, all in less than five years? Grant Wardman is about to tell us. I'm Brett Krager. I run a brokerage of 275 agents across two cities and a real estate school that's helped over 3,000 agents get their real estate license. I recently set out on a selfish quest to learn from some of the most accomplished people in our local industry and I thought, why not bring you guys along for the ride? Today, we're going to relive Grant's journey from a home inspector to a clergyman to a new real estate agent, to a top producing real estate agent, selling 40 houses in his first year, to a team leader, to a broker, and finally, to the leader of a top five brokerage in his market, all in less than five years. I wanna highlight his ability to constantly be promoting himself and replacing himself, and how you can do the same thing in your business right away. Um, before we get going, I have to ask, I saw in some, uh, some research I was doing, you know Chip and Joanna Gaines, mm -hmm. so what's the, Aren't they just like the worst people? What's the <laughs> what's the story with them? Oh, they're so awesome. So before anybody knew who they were, and they were flipping houses, uh, and I was a home inspector in Waco during that time frame. And so we went to church together, <clears throat> so we knew each other a little bit. And so um, at the time, I had come up with this great idea to do um, like pre-home inspections. Okay. So like, hey, Chip, uh, let me come out before you start fixing it. I will you know, do what I can to, you know, basically do a full on home inspection, show everything wrong with it. And then when it's done, I'll come back mm -hmm. and I'll sh I'll redo the report and I'll show everybody all the work that you've done. Okay. And we'll put a little sign in the yard called safeguard approved because of safeguard home inspections. So yeah. Safeguard approved, you know, and then they can get a report of everything that's been fixed, you know. So, um. It's a great idea. Yeah, it was fun <laughs> and it, it's, you know, didn't like take off or anything, but uh, it was fun and uh, we had a good time doing it. Are they as Nice as they say. Oh, they're, 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 they're they just, the best. They're, 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 yeah, they've grown that into they're an, awesome. an incredible, incredible, uh, yeah, they've grown that into a credible business. Yeah, for sure. Yep. From the intro, there's so much to unpack what you've done and accomplished in a very short amount of time. So, start from the beginning. What's your origin story? Why'd you get into real estate in the first place? So, at the time, we, my wife and I had planted a church, um, and we had been doing that for a couple of years. I was working with a nonprofit to kind of pay the bills, but it was a, a missions uh, organization or raising funds for stuff in South America. Mm -hmm. And so a couple years into it, I felt like the Lord said, hey, your pioneering time is coming to an end here. And so uh, I was like, okay, great. That means the church is going to pay the bills. Like full-time church planter, I'm going to be knocking on doors, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, you know, whatever. And that's what I assumed we'd be doing. And the Lord very clearly, just clear as day, no, I don't ever want to pay you from the church. Okay. And I said, that's not how you that's not how you pastor a church. Yeah. <laughs> like you I got bills, what are you talking about? Yeah. And I just really had this strong sense that he was saying, I don't want to pay you from the church. I want you to dream of a business that you can jump into, you can create, you can hand over to me, I can pour my blessings on, and it'll easily pay your bills. It'll let you meet lots of other people you'd never meet any other way. Um, it's gonna give you plenty of time to do the church stuff as well, and we'll have a fun adventure doing it. So I was like, okay, and started praying, and uh, pretty quickly came to real estate. I'd always enjoyed real estate. My dad was an interior designer mm. and I had been a home inspector previously. And so I thought, well, I get my license. So I signed up for school that day and yeah. had my license a month later. Yeah. And then just kind of like off to the races. Yeah. And sure enough, like the Lord, he just did everything that he said he would do. Yeah, was able to close 40 deals. Um, at the time that was like 7 million worth. And yeah. so it made more money in my first pay, in my first closing, I think I made more money than I made the entire yeah. first year before, That's right? That's how it always happens. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just yeah, super fun journey walking with the Lord on like a true calling. That's just like any, anyone who gets into real estate, you have to have a reason for doing it. Yeah. That's the biggest thing I tell people. It's just <clears throat> you're going to be serving people, and if people bug you, you're going to have a very tough time in the real estate that's industry. For sure. Yeah. And so, well, that's sure. exciting. Very cool. So, yeah. So 40 deals in the first year. So how does how does how do you do that? What happened? Yeah. What, what, what from the brokerage to lead sources to kind of what you find and how did yeah. you get going? So I don't want to like be too much of that guy, but uh, <laughs> like really I was like, well, crap, Lord, I have my license, I have no money. Now what? Ah! Yeah. <laughs> what do we do? And uh, every day that was my posture, and so I would just, what the heck do I do today? And, and the Lord would give me these little tiny projects. So like, okay, today, 
you know, get on Facebook and make a page. Like, okay, with all of my might, yeah. I would <laughs> do that one project until it was done. And then, okay, what's next? And then, all right, now invite all these people to the page. Okay, well, all of my might, I do that, you know, like, like my life depended on it. Each, uh -huh. each little project, I would just do it wholeheartedly. And it just became these little tiny stair steps that as it continued, then a little opportunity would open up and I just do that to the best of my ability. And that just kind of continued. And so then it just began to snowball where I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing with those regular little projects to help grow the business and just do the normal business things. But like I really pushed hard on them and um, I tried to find a few different sources of business. Um, so at the time there was a builder that helped me get going. Um, he had built, he built our own house and the house behind us was available like for sale and I ended up being able to list that. Okay. And then he gave me a few listings off of that. And then, you know, some connections from, from him. So that was like 20% of the business the first year. Okay. Um, and then, you know, bought some leads and then did the website stuff and then a bunch of sphere stuff. And, yeah. you know, so it all just kind of, just pushed on everything I could find to push on. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, some of them worked and a whole bunch of them did it. And yeah. it ended up being did a good you, year. How much, how much, did you spend a bunch of money in the first year? You said you bought some leads. Yeah, not was a more whole, on technology. Not a leads? whole bunch. It was more on like systems or technology. Okay. So um, after, let's see, so say January was the beginning. I got my license at the very end of October and then I kind of didn't do anything the first couple months as I was just waiting for that period to end. So January was go time. Mm -hmm. And so January, um, I didn't spend any real money besides for open house signs until May. And then the first real money I spent was a Zillow contract for six months. Okay. And so um, that was kind of the only leads that I really purchased. That, that did you renew year. it after six months? Uh, I did. So okay. Um, you still have it. So I went for six months. I was like the number one realtor in my zip code, uh -huh. and it was at the time it was eight hundred bucks a month, which felt like a ton of like yeah. felt that at the time felt insane. Like yeah. this is crazy, but. You know, they're good salespeople. They're like, just one closing. I was like, okay, I, surely I can get just one right. closing. be number one. <laughs> and I was in like a nicer zip code. And so I thought, oh, I'm gonna sell these great houses. Well, I didn't sell anything in that zip code. Uh, I did close five deals. Okay. And they were all first time home buyers that had called in here and then bought out in different mm -hmm. zip codes. And at the end of the six months, I was basically getting like four phone calls a month for $800. So I was like, man, 200 bucks. For, for, for each phone call, like that's that's crazy. I can do better. So then I switched from that and I I, I called my lady and said, what's the cheapest zip code in all of Oklahoma? Because I don't want to <laughs> lose my premier agent status. Right. She was like, well, Amber Picasso, Oklahoma, it's $10. Okay. You could have 100% of it. I was like, <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> take it, I'll take it. So I still have that zip code today. <laughs> um, but uh, so I did 10 bucks a month and then I moved all that money over to, I think Real Geeks was the next thing I, okay. I started spending money on. Okay, yep. very good. So you didn't build your business off internet leads. It was a No, supplement. such a small, yeah, yeah such yeah, yeah. a small portion of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think. I think. I think Zillow was like first year, maybe 20% and then internet leads pass at like maybe five or 10%. Like it's a tough business. You it's know. tough to build your business on it. it yeah. Like it, it's important, but it's, yeah. you can't yeah. do everything off of it. Yep. Yeah. I probably tell people you can't rely on it. It's good when it comes through, if it's making sense. Yeah. Um, so how long, so got your license January, February ish. And then it was May when you started getting some deals. How long was that? How long were you pushing on stuff before something started Yeah. To fall? So, so really from when I, first got the license, it was a full six months before I made a dime. Okay. okay. Yeah. And it was a, a friend from church, their brother uh, was shopping. And so they called up like, hey, we're looking a couple hundred thousand. I was like, sweet, let's go. And so that was January time. Uh -huh. Couldn't find what they wanted. Then they said, hey, let's go on up to 300. And they're like, oh, wow, Deal. heck yeah. So they started shopping, couldn't find what they want. They're like, oh, maybe let's go up to 400. So I was like, oh my gosh. But this is three months, you know, yeah. like really working hard. So I finally get under contract. And that first paycheck was a great one. It was like 15,000 or just under, mm -hmm. but it simply paid off my credit card. <laughs> you know, from the months on. of mm -hmm. pushing. Yes. Um, but then thankfully I had like a couple more going pending. And then I, I remember that May of that year, I had maybe five clothes in May. And um, that, that month I earned double 
in that one month what I'd earned the entire, I earned 27,000 a year, mm -hmm. the year before okay. with the ministry job. And so in that one month it earned double. And I was like, this is insane. Yeah. What is this business? This is crazy. Is this legal? Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. And then just kind of snowballed from there, so. Coming from my old job, I made as much in one month as I'd made from the previous. And it was, the cool thing about that I just thought was because in real estate or when you're working for yourself, you get to determine what you're worth, right? It's like right. back when I worked at, at a bank, people were telling me what I was worth. Every two weeks, they gave me a paycheck. Yep. And so you had to come out and do something like that. So, yeah. so first six months, living on a credit card, uh, start to roll. So you really sold the, the, the 30, 40 in a six month period then after that. Is that fair to say? Yeah, or is I mean, it from it, the time? It really got moving from like, you know, like, April's when all the pendings happened and then May closings. So May yeah. to December is when really when we had 39 transactions. Yeah, going. real. that's crazy. So I assume you're not a single person with no kids. Right, yeah. So you've got we other had three kids at the time. What was right. that like? What kind of conversations did you have to have at home? Yeah, so my my wife is the best in all of the world. You yeah. know, she's, she's amazing. So um, I think what we learned pretty quick is that this business goes in ebbs and flows like really strong and so we both embraced that and she gave me tons of uh basically like when when things were moving she was like get out there go go yeah. do it make it happen because we know it'll calm down next week or in mm -hmm. two weeks mm -hmm. and then when it calms down we would just really work hard to enjoy the family time and embrace each other and not panic that like oh my gosh i have nothing coming out down the pipeline like mm -hmm. no like it's it's gonna come yeah. and go and so we would just enjoy the down times and then work as hard as possible when it got busy. And um, that was a huge, huge lesson for us there in that first year, for sure. Yeah, yeah, there has to be a lot of communication with the family and the spouse, because it can, yeah, and talking about seasons, and like you said, in this flow, I need to be, I'm gonna be gone, and in the ebb, we can regroup. If you're getting pulled from home, and you're trying to go out and get business, and, and you're trying to do it even keel, uh, the same amount of time every hour, every week, it's just, Right. You're not going to get it going on yeah, the ground. For sure. Yeah, some people are like super structured, like, okay, I'm only mm -hmm. going to make calls from this time to this time. Not only do showings from here to here, mm -hmm. I don't. Maybe if you're like way established years yes. in the business, yes. yes, you can definitely get there. But I think when you're first going, like, if you get an opportunity, you better get everything yep. you got to mm -hmm. get that ball moving. It's like pushing that ball up, you know, like this giant stone up a mm -hmm. hill. Like, you're gonna put so much effort, yeah. you know, for a long period of time to get one inch. Yes. But if you can get the inch, you're gonna get three inches real yeah. fast. And yeah. then, a, you know, so. Yeah, just getting it to tip, because so many people get into real estate for their time freedom, right? Yeah. And in the beginning, you, you have to earn that time freedom, because you don't time. get it in the beginning. And yeah. so, I think if you have that, that structure is really good, but if you have that structure, I think it just creates a longer runway for you sometimes. To get off the ground because yeah. if you're not going if you're not chasing everything with everything you've got it creates a longer runway yeah okay so you sell because you can't become a broker for i think it was two years at the it time, was two right? years then yep. did you move into a team leadership role did you just stay individual agent for two years or how did you move so, from i want to lead from i want to sell yeah. my own to i want to lead people i didn't start the team stuff until we started the brokerage and then we started a really basic version of the team at that time okay yeah. most people never start a brokerage two years in You've sold quite a bit of real estate. What made you decide, okay, now I'm ready. Uh, I'm re again, I'm ready to go lead people. I want to go out on my own. I want to take that risk. Yeah. What, what led yeah. you there? Um, there was some, like, I was at a great brokerage with a great broker, but I wasn't getting quite what I was looking for. So I started shopping. And when I shopped, I didn't feel like I found what I was looking for. So then I had a buddy that was like, hey, what if we did this? And so I started praying about it. And really felt like the Lord said, like, yes, this is very much who your gifting is and what you're good at. Mm -hmm. To like, I love the, I love Barnabas in the in the Book of Acts. How he encouraged Paul to like go out there. So that's who I like to try to be like is an encourager of other people to get them uh -huh. going. And so I just felt the green light there and thought, well, all right, let's just do what we can to help as many people as we can get where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how the brokerage got going. Okay. Absolutely. What's the biggest difference between, so you kind of became a broker and a team leader at the same time. Yeah, well, at the time we, so <laughs> how'd that work? I started the team in the worst way possible. I was like, hey, I got a little extra money. I'll just buy some leads and 
if y'all close it, just send me some money and it'll be fine, you know? And very loose. Six months into it, um, you know, I wasted thousands and thousands of uh -huh. dollars. And I was like, oh, no, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Okay, okay, hit pause, we're changing everything. <laughs> That's not gonna work for it. So I, I kind of I accidentally started a team bridge and then I quickly realized like, oh no, like this team stuff is really expensive and hard mm -hmm. and I, I can't do it that way. So I think then we, we pulled back from the team stuff. We just focused on the brokerage mm -hmm. from there. Okay. You've been a team leader and a broker. What's the, what's the biggest difference between being a team leader and a broker? Oh gosh. Um, that's a tough question. Mm -hmm. Being the broker, I'm able to say, Hey, here's a bunch of tools and resources to help you get where you want to go. I'm here. If you need me, get out there and run your business how you want. Mm -hmm. And that works great for people who have a vision for their, for where they want to go. And you know, so, that's kind of that world. The people who join the team are like, hey, tell me what to do. I wanna I wanna go big, mm -hmm. tell me what to do. And they're looking for a lot more coaching and, and then also like the finances to buy leads that they can't buy and team up together. So as a broker, you can be more of a support role, cheerleader, and as a team leader, you're responsible for people. Yeah, it's, yeah, well, like today, the broker is definitely like, come on, everybody's welcome, yeah. you know? But on the team side, it's like, listen, this is freaking expensive <laughs> and like there's tremendous risk in this and yeah. you better do it well you know like mm -hmm. it's a totally different environment yeah. for okay. sure yeah. and you enjoy the broker side more it sounds like i enjoy the broker side a lot okay. more i mean i really enjoy the team stuff but it can get stressful when it's like oh we dried up on pendings and we were spending you know 30 grand a month it's like oh my gosh mm -hmm. this better work you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's just tough just yeah. so much capital on the team side First, you know, I, I've heard that across the nation, if you're keeping 20% of what your team is spending, that that's a good team. Mm -hmm. So that means to, if I want to, if I want to replace my income and make a hundred grand off of the team, well, I need to be spending half a million dollars a year to hit the national mm -hmm. average. average yeah, you know, yeah. that's like that's a lot of risk. Yeah, it's like a brick and mortar business in a sense. So mm -hmm. it's. Okay. Can't I play around with it. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So talk to me a little bit more. So you you start you started your team. You're kind of growing that. Uh, you got the brokerage on the side. How does the brokerage go from one person, two people? It sounded like to three. How, what are you at? Yeah. Now? Um, we're around three seventy. Okay. So moment. how do you go? With, yeah. Uh, four years. Yeah. So the so we started with just a few people and and. I immediately realized I had no clue what I was doing as a broker. Okay, <laughs> so good. I was like terrified. Good to learn early. And also like, and, you know, I just left the brokerage. So now I didn't have the person to call and ask questions. So I was like, I need a coach immediately who is a broker and can show me what to do. So I started looking around for coaching. Um, I stumbled into Club Wealth Coaching. And so I hired a coach. At the time it was, I was a tier two. And so a tier two person was um, $1,000 a month. And I thought, this is insane, like that's crazy money for a coach. And then my, my mother-in-law, she gave me a Christmas gift. She's like, hey, I heard you wanna get a, you know, like, get a coach. I wanna, get, I wanna like really help with that, I wanna give you a little money. And she gave me a very generous gift. Uh, I think, I don't know, 500 bucks, yeah. you know. And, and in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, this just paid for one hour of the, you know, <laughs> like, coaching. what am I doing? But I also thought, okay, this guy, um, his name is Tim Ray, he's up in Kansas City. He's a broker owner, he's a team leader. He's doing like, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals a year. Um, I thought surely I'm smart enough to basically do like two more deals a year by being so, so yeah. close with this guy. And so I bit the bullet. It was terrifying to spend that money. But obviously like by far the best choice I ever made is investing in my business to, to learn from smart people. And so, you know, like you said at, at the beginning, like you were on this journey to learn from the best of the best, like that's what that was for me. And so basically from that point forward, our first phone call, he was like, hey, tell me about your brokerage and I shared with him our model. And he was like, he just laughed at me. He was like, oh, this is a bankrupt model. Oh God. Yeah, uh, you wanna quit now or what do you wanna do? And I was <laughs> like, what, what's wrong? And so it was really cool. He just like tweaked a couple things. He like kept the heart of the model, but he just tweaked a couple things to make sure that it would stay healthy. And so, but because of that, I was very nervous that we were, I don't, I don't like it when people are like, we're gonna do this, now we're gonna do this, now we're gonna do this. You know, there's mm -hmm. agents 
hate that. And so I didn't want to be that. So basically I worked with my coach for about nine months. So from January to September, um, just making sure that the stuff that we picked was like really healthy and that we weren't going to go bankrupt and it was going to work. Made it through the height of the selling season with about 10 people and felt like, okay, this feels stable. Like, I think, I think we could do this. And so that's when we started to kind of tell people about, Hey, have you heard about what we're doing? And so, we grew from, um, I think we had like maybe 15 in the, at the end of the third quarter, and then we added 30 that last quarter. Mm. So it was like real fast growth. So we ended the year with 35, the next year added another 100, next year added another 100, next year. So it just kind of continued to, to go like that. And that's all. Way faster than I ever thought uh -huh. possible. I was like, like every brokerage wants to grow. You know, the more you grow, the more agents you have, the more sales you get. I think for a long time in the industry, it was taboo to try to recruit people. You wanted people just to come find you because right. you were such a right. valuable asset to the community and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I think for someone who wants to grow at the rate that you've grown, what kind of energy and focus? I know everything kind of goes in seasons, but what kind of energy and focus did you put on just growth? Not providing value, not keeping the business, but just getting more people. Yeah, for sure. A lot of. A lot of energy, <laughs> a yeah. lot of focus. Yeah. Um, Black, John Cheplak, that that's his main thing is recruitment. You know, mm -hmm. like wherever you want to go, the answer is probably people. Mm -hmm. And so learning how to leverage people is just a vital skill for any business owner. It probably doesn't matter what business you're in. If you want to grow any business, you got to have people mm -hmm. to do it. And so you got to tell people what you're doing. You got to attract people to what you're doing too. So. Yeah, we spent lots of time and yeah. energy and effort and focus on the recruiting component. And yeah, we've heard so many brokers like, well, I never do, you should, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, yeah. hey, it's cool, but we're going somewhere. Yeah. We gotta get there, so yeah. we're just, and I, you know, for us personally, uh, we've always felt it was very important to just be very like, um, like, hey, have you heard? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Glad you're happy. You know, like, you know, yeah. not pushy or, or like, oh, we're better or any, yeah. none of that. Just like, hey, did you hear what's going on? Like, like a car sale. Hey, did you hear about the sale? Yeah. Hey, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, if someone's not happy, they're going to leave anyway. Yeah. Right. So if you're looking for someone who's looking for an opportunity or looking for another way or a better way. Exactly. You're not. First of all, you're not stealing anyone because no one belongs. Right. They're, they're out there looking for it. So, yeah. but that's the, I know a lot of people in, with the emergence of revenue sharing models and profit sharing models, yeah. recruiting has been a lot more um, front of mind for a lot of agents. But yeah. for the longest time, I remember brokers just kind of wanting more agents, but not knowing what to do. It's like, right. you gotta call people, you gotta text exactly. people, you gotta talk yeah. to people, you gotta let them know about what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, good, yeah, I think, I think heart, you know, emphasizing that it's not gonna happen on accident. And you can't rely other people in your business to care about growth of your business. Absolutely. You not. have to take that on yourself. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. A mentor, a coach is so important for whether so you're huge. new or whatever level you're at, there's someone who's better than you. And they've made mistakes, don't recreate the wheel, all the a million things you've all heard. Are you yeah. still working with your coach as you're where you're Yeah, so at? I was with him for a couple years mm -hmm. and then his coach um, had a brokerage of 500. You graduated. Yeah, so I switched <laughs> coaches and worked with him for a couple years. And then uh, because of him, he taught me about ancillary businesses and brokers, so like mortgage, title, insurance, all this other stuff. And so because of him, we've been able to open a bunch of those as well. And, and so now I'm in a different coaching program with a company called Strategic Coach, but it's it's uh, like a whole bunch of different types of businesses okay. um, that all come together for masterminds and stuff. And so I'm learning from all these different types of businesses, but I'm 100% still spending stupid money on coaching mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's so valuable. Yeah. yeah. That's what I had a, um, I've had a mentor, multiple mentors my entire, um, I paid for coaching one time and I kind of went through, I kind of just graduated through what they had to, to offer. but. My thought was, I'm gonna keep paying until he doesn't provide value. Exactly. And yeah, every time right. I went, I left with something right. that I could go implement or change or something. And so, yeah. it's such a yeah. It's 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 so weird, and it sucks to bite the bullet and pay it. But yeah. it is. It's it's game changer. Whenever you Absolutely. try to learn something, it's like new. rocket fuel. I mean, just like just yeah. you know, they they literally are who you hope to be. They show right. you exactly how to get where you want to go. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I was with them for a, a long time and then simultaneously, I jumped into some uh, John Cheplak coaching and into Hatch, Eric Hatch, and what he's got. And I just, like, if somebody's kicking butt, I want to learn everything I can. Like, so as a, as a broker, what, what are you pulling or what are you looking for from coaching? Is it more uh, strategic numbers, financial, or is it more leadership? Is it more uh, recruiting? Or what, what's the coaching I mean, it, that you're it changes going? in seasons. Like, okay. you know, you see these pain points that come up and you're like, I gotta find somebody. So like my team, for example, we ran a team for a couple years and we grew to 25 team members mm -hmm. and we closed, you know, 250 deals or something like that. And it, we were still making no money. Like it, our model was screwed up. Every, it just wasn't functioning. We were spending a lot of money. We weren't losing a lot of money, but we just weren't making money. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the year, after, at the end of the two years, me and my partner and on that team, we were like, hey, we could have easily both sold two more houses and yeah. kept, <laughs> I think, you know, our, our distribution was 20 grand each. Yeah. At the end of the year, we were like, this was a lot of effort for mm -hmm. nothing. So we hired, um, we hired Eric Hatch, who's brilliant on the team model, but more like kind of the Navy SEAL model. Yeah. We're like, dude, just literally tell me what to do. You know, so we yeah. feel this pain point and we go find who's great at that and, and hire him. Uh, I felt this pain point regarding like, oh my gosh, I've got several businesses like, ah. So I will look for an entrepreneurship, like more general business mm -hmm. coach, you know, so it just changes in season. Yeah, so right now you're in the season of running the ancillary businesses and trying to get those right. scaled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So your brokerage, tremendous amount of growth, very short amount of time. There's 700 brokerages out there. What got you that growth? What, where was the attention focus? What did you do internally? Um, you know, without, I mean, we can get into the splits and stuff if you want, but what'd you do? What, again, yeah. there's, there's too many other options. How can you, why did you grow so fast? Right. I, so I personally came from a brokerage that was like a really inexpensive split and uh, each transaction was just a, like super cheap. So I came from the cheap world, doing 40 deals a year, I realized that cheap is not always the most helpful. And so at the time when I was searching, I was looking for somebody who would like, just, you know, practical example. At the time, I really wanted Fallout Boss and I wanted Wailopo. Mm -hmm. And so for a solo agent by yourself, that's going to be, at the time, 600, 650 bucks a month. Yeah. So that's a lot. And that's before ad spend, you know, like, yeah. that's a lot, that's a big investment. But what was frustrating is I knew if if I had it, I could add a few people onto that same thing and it would almost be the same price. Yeah. So that leverage was, was a big deal. And I just thought, okay, well surely somebody else bought this stuff and you know, I can just tag in and I'll pay, yeah. I'll pay more, like I'm fine paying more if the value is there, if there's yeah. a real exchange of value. Um, and so that's what I was looking for and I just didn't feel like I could find it. So then I just thought, okay, what what do I feel like is important to run, like a turnkey, like how do I run a great um, real estate sales business, all the tools that are needed. Um, and I know if we do it together, it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. And then let's just try to do the math to figure out, okay, how much can we send people home with where it still makes sense. It's a win-win for everybody. And um, so that's kind of like the very beginnings of where it started. And when I started, I th because that was my focus, that was the main thing that I felt like we were offering. And what's interesting is the farther we go, that stuff is, is like a small slice of the pie, but the support and the training and the other side of it is a huge chunk. And so today we spend a whole lot more you know, focus on like, okay, how else can we do better support and better training and better encouragement and all that stuff. And yes, this stuff is, is important, but this stuff is really important, but you don't really recruit off of support, right? So, you know, you kind of got to have some. Right, right, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's what uh, I'd heard this talking about something else, but when you commoditize something, right, when you make it just about the numbers, they'll go compare numbers and they'll leave, right? And yeah. so that's, that's what like, kind of leads me into my next question is, so that kind of, the technology offered, the uh, maybe the split offered, attracted them. That's kind of what they offer. What who is like, what do you do to create a personality or a culture within the brokerage? Cause I think yeah. that gets them there, but then you gotta keep them. Right. So what do you focus on? Yeah. And what's more important? What do you think's more important? Uh, well, I think people say that they will come for whatever reason they came for, they leave for. Okay. okay. Uh, that's sort of true. I don't wholeheartedly agree with that, 
but um, meaning if they came for a good split, they'll just always be looking for a better right, split. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Culture is unbelievably huge. I think one of the biggest things that we've tried to fight from day one is I hate the mentality of like, wow, hey, like I called this I called this luxury specialist in our market mm -hmm. years ago. And I'd been creeping on him and he, you know, he like went to church and he had a cool brand. And I was like, hey man, I see that you, you know, seem to love the Lord and you've got a great business. I'm new, I'm just trying to learn stuff. I'd love to pick your brain sometime. And he says, oh, okay, well, what brokerage are you with? And I told him what brokerage. He said, well, you're my competition, so I won't be sharing. God. And it just like, ah, you know, like you, Jeez. you know. Yeah. Okay, so that kind of s summarizes what a lot of people feel is like, we're competition mm -hmm. but you know like no there's so much business out there to be had it's not even funny like we can all encourage and support each other and everybody can get where they want to go if we keep our hands open and we just encourage people you know like and so i hated that like close off mindset and so from day one i was like literally anything you do that's working we're going to spill all the beans with everybody that wants to know and we're all going to end up doing better because of it so I think that's maybe like the seed of where some of our culture started from, and we've pushed really hard to keep that culture. Obviously we have people who are not that, but we push hard to try to encourage people to get to that point. Yeah, I think it it's kind of a buzzword, I feel like, and people say it all the time, but it's so real and I wanna mention it. Just the abundance mindset versus the scarcity mindset. Yeah. So many agents um, are, you know, when you're brand new and there's no deals around and you need the money, it feels like it's impossible to get a transaction. Right. And once you realize, you go through that process and you see it, it's, you realize there's two to 3,000 sales a month right. to go out there and get. So I think yeah. when people understand that, it changes what they think. And, and for me, it transitioned me to just trying to be valuable to someone. And if I can just help someone, they'll use me. Exactly. And that's right. kind of what I try yeah. to do. And like, if, if you study people, especially successful people, you're gonna find the ones who give freely mm. and are there to help people, whether there's something in it for them or not, yeah. they end up magically leveling up mm. over and over and over. And it doesn't make, doesn't make natural <laughs> sense, but that is how it works. Like, if you're sowing generously, you're gonna reap generously, and so, um, yeah, like it's so it's it is an, a very important mindset to have of like, no, like I can share all of my secrets mm -hmm. and everybody's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the biggest thing you know I've heard between a coach and a mentor is coach is an exchange, money for value. Mentor is kind of there just to take you under their wing a little bit, show you what they know, help you out. Hopefully yeah. you're not too big of a you know drain on their you know what they're doing. Right. But yeah, um, having that just someone to look out for your answer your stupid questions because everyone yeah. has ignorance questions right? Um, right and so to help you with those is such a valuable piece yeah that's good um and then just like finding along the way that there'll be pain points as we grow where things are lacking or things are missing so just focusing really hard to pull in those lacking pieces like for example my wife is like recently she's had this she's jumped in this last year really helping us and she's done phenomenal things with the culture, just like celebrating people, mm -hmm. honoring people, remembering people, you know, like she's just done a phenomenal job, way more than I am able to do. So it's super important to do that stuff. Yeah, I think um, some people say they don't really have a culture, but you do, you're just not, it's not intentional, right? And right. so I think if you're not focusing on people, and just like you said, having your wife help step in, someone, it has to be, you have to be thinking about it constantly because yeah. There's so much going on. You can be trying to deal with all the other stuff, but the most important part is making someone feel appreciated, welcome, seen, heard, yep, yep. all those things. And so that's a um, very big piece of it. Uh, so I'd heard, uh, I, I was again doing some preliminary research <laughs> for our, for our uh, interview. Um, I'd heard you on another video talk about um, this idea of 80-20, about getting a project across oh, yeah. the 80% line yep, kind of thing. Yep. As a, business owner especially but managing broker with tons of people or whatever as you're trying to get new projects out or new softwares or new whatever yeah talk about that what that means yeah. and how you can apply it yeah that's probably been one of the the biggest attributes of success for my own personal like sales business and then the brokerage and then just like each business overall mm -hmm. is that idea of if you are 
you have this tremendous amount of things to finish and to do. If you're going for perfection on every single one, you are going to do a fraction mm -hmm. of, you're gonna get a fraction of the things accomplished. And usually when you're going for, for, for perfection, you just stall out at the end of the day. Like you're, you're, you push, you get a big chunk of it done, and then it'll last for months trying to like make it just perfect. Yep. And then you finally, by the time you're ready to launch it to whatever you're doing, you either don't care about it or you're too tired to mess with it or now you you don't have the time that you did before. Like, it just ruins everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm a huge proponent of like, figure out what you wanna do, put a tremendous amount of effort as fast as you can, like come up with a good thing and just create a good thing. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be perfect, just get it out there. And that's a thousand times better than the perfect thing that never makes it, mm -hmm. you know, obviously. So, I think that's huge, you know, like, so especially when you're starting, you know, okay, shoot, I need a Facebook page. Just get 80% done. Yeah. Like, nobody cares. Nobody's gonna read your copy, you know, what it says. Nobody's gonna go check all the, like, just get yeah. it done, check it off the list, move on. If you have time, you can go tweak it later. Just like, start knocking stuff out. That's the way to move your business forward and get some momentum to where you can enjoy some success. Yeah. And you can refine it over time based yeah. on results. As stuff's Absolutely. coming in but on top of that, um, Craig Groeschel, the leader of Life Church, he does a ton of leadership podcasts or yep. leadership. We love his talk. Greg he does, yeah, he's an awesome speaker. Um, even in, in, on his leadership, he talked about uh, the concept. He called it GetMo. Have you heard that talk? Mm -hmm. So GetMo is an acronym for Good Enough to Move On. Okay, yeah. And it's same exact concept. Uh, it's awesome. like, how do we yeah. get it out there to where it's good enough to move on? Exactly. It's never going to be perfect. That yes. need to be perfect. Yeah. Let's move on to the next project and accomplish way more. So much more. Yeah. So yeah, very important. I think for again business owners, leaders, and everything. Yeah. It sounds like such a simple concept, but <laughs> like it is game changing. Mm -hmm. Like it'll really the people you know like night and day difference to the people who do and don't you know like it's mm -hmm. so important yeah so uh, again I, I heard i heard you mention in a previous interview that you had some businesses you love some businesses you don't and you're talking about um you were reading a book at the time called the pumpkin uh, oh yeah the pumpkin, pumpkin plan yeah, yeah, yeah pumpkin plan which i thought was super interesting and i went to amazon and ordered it i have not received it yet. yeah yeah cool. um but uh i think a lot of people when they first start a business or uh start their brokerage they want to start creating vertical businesses or ancillary businesses that you talked about earlier. Right. What's been your, it sounds like you've done that. What's been your experience with that? Would would you have done them earlier? Would you have waited and done them? What? How's your experience been with them? Well, so, so the whole vision that I learned from my coach, his name's Long Doan. Mm -hmm. He runs Real, Realty Group. I think they have like 750 agents at the moment and all over, they're, they're, he's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Great guy. <laughs> anyway, so um, the whole idea is, you know, every time a transaction closes, in each state, there's a certain dollar amount that's released over the next two years into the market. Mm -hmm. So for example, like, okay, now the painters are gonna be fed because we closed this house and I want some new paint. And now the carpet, and now the movers, and now the title company, and the insurance, and the mortgage, and all these different things. So those are ancillary. And so the idea is you build a large brokerage, maybe you're not making tons of money. In my model that I'm copying specifically from him is the whole idea is grow a big brokerage, with very generous splits, but you build trust with a lot of people, and then you can use that trust, hopefully, to encourage that trust, like a bridge to some other businesses. Like, sometimes yeah. it works great, sometimes it doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. um, Can't make people do stuff. So today we have a, um, I hope I don't forget any, but we have a, a property management company, um, we have a mortgage company, we have a title company, we have an insurance company. Um, and then I've got the team as well, and then some investment stuff, okay? So um, that's the idea, is like, hey, these guys are awesome. I know what I like to use when I'm buying or selling or whatever, so like, that's what we've created. Let's try to make the best option possible. Mm -hmm. um, and so would I have started them sooner? Some of them yes, some of them no. Um, some are like, like way easier to start than I thought and vice mm -hmm. versa. Mm -hmm. Some are like, pulling teeth so much yeah. harder than I ever thought. Uh -huh. So I don't know, but definitely I think it's important to keep your focus like very, very attentive on the main thing. Cause if you don't have the main thing, you can't, you can't do the ancillary mm -hmm. stuff too, so. Yeah, yeah, if you're not generating the work off that, yeah. So, yeah. so really don't, don't do it until your main thing can support it, I guess. Yeah. Cause it's not, okay. What, and what I think like, are, it is like, ancillary like yes it is not the main thing yeah. like it's this other thing so 
this thing's got to work really, yeah. really, really, really well. So all the ancillary businesses that you have, how do you how do you run those? How do you manage those? Do you do you hire operators for them? Do you just are they low staff businesses or what's the how do you, how are you running those? Um, how are you staying on top of them? hundred hundred percent leverage and leverage through amazing people. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the key, plain and simple. Is like find great people. And then, you know, I think for me personally, the system or the strategy of how the business should run mm -hmm. is relatively easy, but finding that person is such a huge component. Mm -hmm. um, and then supporting them with marketing and encouragement and all that kind of stuff. So, but the person is by far the most important yeah. component. So yes, at the moment, all of these businesses for us are still like pretty small and it is like very, you know, it is 100%, the business is that person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. where most of them are at. Um, hopefully they'll continue growing and you know it, it'll grow past that but that's where we're at at the moment that's what we've as we grow uh, ancillary businesses and other offices we I've learned everything is a people problem if you got the wrong person they will create problems if you got the right person they will solve problems exactly. and uh, okay and that's what you know we had a couple early on where we had some ideas right some inceptions of a business but didn't want to wanted to do it ourselves to keep the ownership and the yeah, profit and sure. all that stuff yeah. and they never got off the ground right. and the ones where we gave away um yeah leadership and and, yeah. and, that, and they took off so yeah very important yeah. i think if you're doing that and I, I think it's important if if you're pursuing that type of stuff it's important to be flexible and be okay that like however you start doesn't have to be how it has to stay mm -hmm. so for many of my businesses the partner that i started with is no longer in the picture mm. But that's okay. Like we can pivot, we can change, we can tweak, we can, you know, like. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the first time it happened, it was devastating. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, this thing's over. What are we gonna do? You know. But now I'm like, kind of expect it. Like, that's no, just part of it. You know, yeah. like people have different. You know, they change what they want, and so that's fine. Yeah. Or if it doesn't take off like you want, some people don't want to be patient enough to yeah. see it happen. You know, that's yeah. fine. It's yeah. okay. It'll be fine. So you currently have, so you've got three offices in, in the Oklahoma City metro area and then one in Tulsa. What's been the biggest bottleneck or, or pain point in growing your footprint across the state of Oklahoma? Oh goodness. There are limitless problems. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Yukon? There's not like one specific issue. Yeah, Yukon just opened. Okay. Um, Is there any, what's, what's going on with it right now? What's broken right now with it? Anything you can... Uh, we Trump. just opened like a week ago, so okay. you know. Do you, when you when you open another office, do you look at having? Do you do any kind of market research where you look at I want to have X number of agents already in my company in that area, or you have a that recruiting would be really plan? Smart. Be really, <laughs> no, I, this one I fell into backwards. Basically, okay. my my title company was like, hey, we have a lot of people asking for closings in Yukon. So if you had a spot for us out there, we could do quite a few more. Oh. And so that's where it started. Okay. So then um, I got connected with this builder developer who's got a great product for small business owners. Mm. And he was like, hey, I got this spot. It's got two, two spots out there. We could, we could work a deal. And so um, it just you know kind of stumbled okay. upon it. And it was like, I got a, plenty of agents out there that would love something closer to mm -hmm. them. It's not like I felt a need for Chamberlain to be out there. The title company, yes, and so okay, it just so worked out. Kind of an ancillary business led you out there to it. Yeah, opportunity. Yeah. Um, are most of your offices kind of thousand square foot coming in and print stuff, or is there a lot? Is there? Yeah, because we operate offer? as a kind of like a central hub, and then just got a spot for mm -hmm. to, to go and meet. So, um, yeah, they're not like huge. They're they're bigger than that, but they're not huge. It's just a place to buzz buzz in and you know have some meetings, meet with clients print some paperwork, grab a sign, just, you know, kind of in and out type stuff. Yeah. But then the, the south office for us is kind of the hub. It's where the, the actual employees are and where I am most of the time. That's where most of the stuff happens. Yeah. yeah. So talk to me about um, support as far as, yeah, staff support. Um, what all, what do you deploy in your brokerage to make your job easier as a broker? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, yeah, just finding great people who are willing to help and then finding a way to compensate them to help and communicating that to everybody else. That's like pretty okay. pretty simple. Uh, but we, we do have a broker support hotline mm -hmm. where it'll ring multiple people based on the type of question that they have. Um, and then the system tracks the minutes spent 
and so we can pay based on time and that's been a, a huge benefit for us um, yeah and then just trying to we you know it's that balance of like I try to run a really you know like lean because payroll is the most expensive thing mm -hmm. that there is yeah. and so <laughs> I try to keep things as lean as possible where everything you know where the people are like maybe like 90% at capacity, you know, like that. And so sometimes we get over and sometimes we go under. So we just try to keep that staffing component taken care of and then leverage contractors or our own agents to help with the other stuff mm -hmm. to take the load off. Okay, delegation is huge, huge key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so find Well, and like delegation in a win-win scenario where like mm -hmm. they're excited to do it, they're getting something of value for them, mm -hmm. And then the person utilizing it's getting value, and it's obviously giving value to me. So that's mm -hmm. that's the key. Is have you have you had to go out? So do you do you have? And I mean, maybe I'm getting too specific on a question. Have you had a situation, and you've gone out and looked for someone to help and delegate with, or do some people come to you and say, "Hey, can I help you?" And it, so yeah. how does that get created? Uh, it just uh, you know, it usually starts with a problem, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, several consistent problems, and we're like, "Oh, that's a problem." Yeah, <laughs> we should find the answer. And then sometimes we're like, "Oh, I know who's perfect for that." Or mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, we, you know, we'll, "Hey, guys, we're looking for this. Who, who do you know that would be great for it?" And then we'll kind of look through the applicants and decide what's best. Yeah. So you started a team when you started your brokerage. You got to a point where you felt like it wasn't worth the time. Split with your previous partner. Right. Now you have a new team. Mm -hmm. What'd you learn? What have you done different? And is this one better? <laughs> okay, so we're in the, uh, okay, so yeah, we, we had the team, you know, on paper, it looked like we were succeeding, but financially we weren't. Hired a new coach and he said, shut the whole thing down. <laughs> okay, good, good coach. <laughs> we can't salvage this start over. <laughs> so we shut it whole, the whole thing down and then we uh, we changed the commission plans we did applications and we only took a small group so it took six or five people on the second one and that vision went from like hey if you want to be on a team you can be on our team and good luck and we'll have you follow up with the leads and you do x number of text calls emails you know come to training all this stuff but what was strange is we had a number of people on that old team that they loved the camaraderie, but they didn't care to do the work and they didn't, they weren't motivated by money or leads or, so then it started to kind of like kill the culture of the team where you don't have these like high producers kicking butt. We, we sort of did, but it like eroded it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's why we had to kill it. And then the new one was like, look, we're only taking people who are doing 30 to 40, or they want, you know, right, have the capacity right. yeah. to work hard enough to do 30, 40 deals a year. Like okay. that's the goal. So the new team, um, the splits were much more painful. The money spent was much more, and um, it was just a lot more intense on every level. And super proud of them. They did an amazing year. So last year we closed. I don't remember the you know the numbers, but it was like 37 million of closing from these five or six people. Yeah, they did great. Um, and uh, so super happy with them. I think what we're looking at now though is some sort of like, we're gonna keep this how it is because it is working like it's mm -hmm. supposed to. Still not making tons of money, mm -hmm. um, even though like, seems like, again, like seems like, but still like tons it's just volume. a very expensive yeah. business. So, um, but there are people in our brokerage who want more training, but they don't wanna give up all the money on the splits. And mm -hmm. so we're looking at some sort of like, kind of group coaching that it would be like a team environment, but not and, um, you know, kind of give them that component without spending the money on the leads and right. that side of it. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. Okay, yep. oh, interesting. So uh, so what did, did, when you rebuilt this team, it was kind of at the guidance of a coach. What was the guidance? Was it spend more money here or spend less money here, get less people, control? What was kind of the tweak um, that made the most kind of impact? Yeah, it was, well, one of the big ones is we went to an ISA model where the ISA mm -hmm. is following up with the leads and mm -hmm. the whole goal is that, hey, we'll just warm them up and give them to you and then you go hunt and kill, you okay. know, like you go find the property. Right. So that was a, obviously a huge change in okay. between the models. And we did just find like agents don't love to follow up, 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 you know, and um, just the nature of internet leads, like it's 
really difficult. So mm -hmm. that was the biggest thing that we changed. And then give them the freedom to focus on their own business and let's train you to build your own business. So like you're gonna come to the team meetings and I'm gonna teach you how to grow your own business. Okay. Which might seem slightly counterintuitive, but like I want you to grow your sphere really, really well. Mm -hmm. And then at, while you're doing that, we'll be working on internet leads and warming them up so you can go and knock them out of the park. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that seems to be working better. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the the concept of kind of replacing yourself. If you can tell everyone, if you can tell everyone on your team everything you know, you can just create multiple views, right? And that's right. that's the concept exactly. we try to run on our team is, yeah. I want to replace myself. I hope someone else comes out and sells the forty houses a year that right. I yeah. was able to do. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, I think I think pushing that back down to the team yeah. probably has a big yeah. impact. But the challenge is that now it's that much more expensive. And so yeah. you can't bring in, you know, bring in a new person. They just went from, you know, you just triple or quadrupled the expense to close one deal. And now you're actually losing money very quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Let me ask this. Have you, so when you're, <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a real estate investor myself, broker, uh, realtor, all that. I, I watch tons of YouTube videos and all the, you know, all the gurus mm -hmm. and everything. And what I've learned over the last couple of years, a lot of these gurus operate in large markets where the average sales price is 400,000. Right. Yeah. Or just recently got over 200. Yeah. Uh, and so can they spend more, can they do different things? Can they spend more money? Is it, I don't want to say oh, easier. Sure. Is it yeah. different? Where are the coaches you're talking yeah, to? Is it sure. different? Can you say that doesn't really work where I'm at? Yeah, for sure. Or does that, how is that? Has yeah. it been different? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, <laughs> one, of, one of my coaches, it was, uh, well, so he increased his pricing, which I'm not currently paying for, but uh, I think he, I, when I coached with him, it was 2,500 a month. Uh -huh. And now it's $2,500 per 20 minute phone call. Good for him. And he, you know, he coaches some of the juggernauts of the nation, uh -huh, like, uh -huh. you know, the number one team in the world, the num you know, yeah. like all this kind of stuff, which is cool. But yeah, like, of course you're the number one team in the world when your average sales price is a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, but the coaching for me versus that guy is the same price, mm -hmm. you know? So of course, yeah. like, yeah, they, they can do a lot yeah. more stuff. Yeah. Uh, their Zillow spend does go up. I don't think it's anywhere, you know, I don't think it matches by any means, yeah. so. It's tough, yeah, yeah. In a you know midwestern kind of like average market, mm -hmm. running teams is is difficult. Yeah, because the percentages are all the same. It's just right. that volume number that's yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars less, and it just makes it. Yeah, um, and obviously, like it costs us less to live, and right. we can you know yes. Yeah. But in the big scheme of things, yeah. like yeah, I think it's a little it's not different. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah, that's what I'm never. Uh, it's never you know, easier for anyone else, but uh, there are factors that make it yes. uh, a little different for them. So yeah, yeah, thanks. Sure. yeah like their phone bill is the same, their car is right, the same, exactly. their insurance is the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, very much, yeah. Uh, so that's what I always tell people. The internet has so much, right? And if you go through YouTube, yeah. you have to filter through nine idiots to get one valuable, probably, uh, information. But most, most of them, uh, they just don't. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to kind of start meeting with local um, industry leaders, not, I, you know, I'd love to talk to Tom Ferry or something, but yeah. he works in different markets. He works different things, all that stuff. And so I want to talk to people who are doing it actively currently here. Yeah. Um, and what they learn, what you know, how has it been for them? Because it's as close to a comparable experience as we as I can try to find. So right. Yeah. That's um, awesome. But yeah, so I always tell people, be, you know, take all the internet gurus with a grain of salt. Yeah. Uh, and so, but a good coach can hopefully tweak his advice to your yeah. to your situation. Okay, so if somebody's wanting to just continually like keep moving forward, I think the biggest things for me would be first like setting your sights and where you want to go. It's been huge, uh, which having the coach helped me see what was possible, and then it gave me more encouragement to feel like okay, well if he did it, I can probably do it too. So that was easier to set the goal on where we want to go. So I think that's very, very, very important. If there's a book called uh, Think and Grow Rich, have you read that? Yeah. And so I definitely don't agree with the spiritual components of yeah. that book, <laughs> but it is very fascinating. Just like all of the richest people in the world at that time frame, um, they set their eyes on where they want to go, and then it's like it all just started coming together, right? So I think there's principles that the Lord put in place of sowing and reaping and mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, and so. Very important. Like where you want to, where you want to go. Get serious about that. 
um, and then just start that 80% rule, just like, okay, step one, step two, step three, and just start m getting that momentum moving forward, get it good enough, push it to the next level, and then wake up the next day like hungry and ready to, okay, what am I pushing on today, knowing that it's like this giant ball that's gonna snowball if, if you will push long enough and hard enough. And it's, like that's what we tell our new people all the time, like look, you're gonna have to push harder than you've ever pushed in your whole life, month after month after month, and it's gonna feel like nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. But if you will push long enough, it'll begin to move just a little and then it'll snowball. But you gotta have that season at the beginning there, you know? So same thing for if you wanna keep growing, like where you wanna go, start pushing on it, it's gonna move. Yeah, start with the end in mind. You gotta know what you're having that vision, yeah. Yeah. So what's next? What's going on with Grant, with Chamberlain? What are you guys trying to do next? Uh, what's, on, what's on the radar for you guys? That's a good question. <laughs> Currently, my my vow to my wife this year was no new businesses in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, last year we worked so hard to start all these businesses, uh -huh. and this year is all about like just make them work. You know, help them help them survive and help them begin to thrive. So that's the season that I'm in. Uh, of course, like we have dreams of it'd be cool to do this and be cool to that. Who knows? You know what can happen. Um, but for, for right now, the goal is like, let's just keep keep doing what we're doing and let's make everything work as well as possible, keep it all as healthy as possible. Um, and we do have an office in Tulsa. It's a smaller office. We have about 20 agents up there. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of opportunity in, in that area. And so we'd love to really push on that one and mm -hmm. see if we can get something like we did here, there. Um, but yeah, we'll see. But no new businesses. I like that. That's tough. <laughs> For someone who's obviously Which is funny. So, okay, you know, that was my promise. But then <laughs> a buddy came in and was like, hey, I want to start commercial. And I was like, well, it's not a new business. I mean, maybe it's like a new branch. Yeah. It's, it's like still in the same thing. So now we have Chamberlain Commercial. It's not a new business, uh -huh. right? I love it. Um, or we, we had a small apartment complex. We sold the apartment complex. And now we're getting into a beach house uh, short-term rental. Uh -huh. yeah, it's not really a new business, you know? It's like kind of the same. Is that <laughs> yep, I know, yeah. We're, we're scraping it's, by by the skin of our teeth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, it's a drug. You, you need that new thing. I, I, I have to, and that's what, uh, and what I found too, because I've gone through phases where I'll say, okay, I'm just gonna relax, right? Because all these things take energy, money, yep. and it's like, sometimes it's nice to just kind of chill for a little bit, not be, it's, the stress is fun and exciting, right. but not to have that. And yeah. as soon as I tell myself, you know, I did this with some rental properties. I said, I'm not gonna buy any more rental properties for a little bit, I'm gonna let them season and refinance. The next day, guess what happened? Yeah, a deal comes across. Yeah, here's a deal ah, comes across. You don't want to lose money. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, yeah, and so I have to have that conversation with myself, like uh, it's for the better good, yes, all this stuff. Right. So yeah, that's I, funny. Uh, just being focused is so important. But as soon yeah. as you tell yourself to focus, a distraction comes along every single time. Right. At least for me. So yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, well, awesome, man. I very much appreciate you coming yeah, out. Yeah, um, Appreciate you taking time. 